Alan Everett, Master of Machines. Join us for part three of the Ray Icon Collection as we check out this awesome XBGT Hardtop Group C Race replica and a fantastic mix of cars in various makes and models. And don't forget to subscribe, like and comment because your valued support helps us keep this show on the road. And I see you're a bit of a fan of the Falcon Coupe. You've even got a replica of the Group C car that Jim Richards ran. Jimmy Richards car from 1977. I am probably Jimmy Richards' biggest fan. Well, I wanted to do a replica of a, of a race car. And I'm reading through a Ford book and I come across a photo, picture of this Falcon. Number 10 car, the Melford Falcon. Perfect, does it? So anyway, I found one local, a white Falcon, as a fair one, chased up some photos, couldn't find a photograph of the back of it from the rear. So I rang his wife, Faye, and uh, I said, I told her what I was doing. I said, you think he'd mind me doing this? Oh, no, no, that'd be fine. And I said, Faye, I need a photograph of the back of it. She said, oh, I'll have one somewhere. She said, I'll find one for you. So anyway, she sent me up a photograph of it, of the back of it, coming out, it was actually a photograph of it coming out of the back of the transporter. And that was perfect, Chad, everything I needed on the back. So we got into it, done, painted it white, and then we had done the, the colours on it, and then the stickers, sign right, a friend over here, he done all the sign writing on it. Do you know much about the history of the actual race car and how Jim did at Bathurst? Oh yeah, yeah, it broke a crankshaft after 53 laps. Really? Yeah, yeah. They, they went all right, he was fifth on the grid to start with, but uh, no, they were, go, they were going all right, and developed this knock. <laughs> that was Boom. the end of the story. <laughs> Yeah, pulled into the pits and knocking really bad. But I think Rod Coppins was driving it at the time. And you've got no shortage of Holdens here too, I see, Ray. No, I was always a Holden fan. Um, as you can see, I've got a couple of the Monaro um, section of them fairly well here with the HT, HQ and HJ. And you've got a hatchback yeah. Tirana too, hatchback I see. Hatchback Tirana, yeah. No, it was advertised in the paper and I rang the guy and I, it was in Canberra and I rang a mate of mine and I said, Go and have a look at this Tirana for me. And he, so he, went and he rang me back and he said, if you come up here and he said, you won't buy that Tirana, he said, I'll pay your airfare home for you. And I said, all right. <laughs> so anyway, I flew up there, done the deal with a guy over the phone, flew up there and drove it home. And, uh, and you've got a, uh, an LJ uh, Brock yeah, replica? Yeah, just a, just, just an LJ Tirana two-door. And, um, I love a and, race replica, it's great. You know, the kids come, when the kids come in here, they, they make a beeline to it, you know, the young blokes. So. A Rambler Javelin. Now what a hot looking car these things were. They do look good, don't they? I, um, I went after one and they're very hard to find. Um, and I rang the Rambler Club and the guy said, oh yeah, he said, there's a guy with one for sale. So I rang him up and he said, oh, he said, I just sold it. And I said, oh, right, eh? I said, you don't know whether there's any others, do you? He said, no, no. He said, look, hang on, he said, my son's got one. He said, I don't think he's ever going to get around to fixing it up. I'll ring you back. I said, right, eh? Ten minutes later, he rings back. He said, yeah, my son will sell this. And I said, right, I'll go and look at it. So I got the address and everything, went and had a look at it, done the deal on the spot. And it pretty much as, as you see it, except, and it was red, except the, whoever painted it should never paint the car. You know, it was a terrible job. So we had to take the paint off it and redo it. And I've also noticed that it's a right-hand drive version. Is, is this an Australian-delivered car? Australian, number 21 of the 90 that was built in AMI in South Melbourne in 1968. Gee, now that is a rare car, mm. isn't it? Yep. yep. Unbelievable. Big racing history with these cars too over in, the Trans Am series in the US and they did right. extremely done well. Re done very well. <laughs> and I love the sleek body design of these things. They look aggressive, they look mean, they look low and they look tough. But tell yep. us about the engine in this car. Just stock 343. So what it come with. They're in Australia, to my knowledge, there are 343s and 360s. But you could get 290s, V8, 290 V8 and a... 390, I think. Wow. Um, big block, but uh, yeah, this is this, this is all stock, original engine, original everything on it. I've got a uh, niece that wanted to do her dead ball, wanted the car to drive her dead ball. I said, well, take your pick. And she picked this. Why wouldn't you, mate? The first time I walked in here and saw this car, I just thought, I've got to show the viewers this car. Uh, it just uh, looks absolutely spectacular. It oozes muscle. <laughs> 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 It had seven inch wheels on it when I got it, the same style. And I didn't think they filled the guards up enough, so I put eight inch wheels on it. But well, definitely, That's yeah. all I've done to it. <laughs> Gives it a bit of mongrel. Yeah, yeah it does, <laughs> it does. Yeah. The V6 Capri, they were a very angry little machine, weren't they? Yeah, well, a pretty little car. Um, a group of people come here from Mafra. 
and I got a visitor's book in there and I get everybody to sign the visitor's book and this guy wrote in the book, disappointed not to see a V6 Capri in here, in, in the collection. And uh, I thought, yeah, well, I haven't thought about a V6 Capri because uh, they've got a good racing history in Australia uh, and everywhere, they done pretty well. So I said after looking for one, and it, God, I couldn't believe how popular they were and how valuable they were. And uh, Laurie Nelson had that car. It was, it's a red car, and it was originally a red car, but it was blue. Somebody had painted it blue. I thought, oh my Godfather, anyway, I took all the blue off, turned it back, got it back to bare metal, and, and ended up with that. But um, it was quite a little process because kept, things kept going wrong, or I get sidetracked. But no, I'm very happy with that. It's a nice little car. What do we have here? A track toy. It is a track. It is my toy, to be truthful. This car was a rolling body shell when I got it. It was at one of those tow truck places where they pick up cars if you want to get rid of something. To, and a mate of mine spotted it and I rang the guy and he, we'd done a deal. And, uh, and I said to him, can I come and get it on Saturday? It's not going for me to buy tomorrow night, it's going to crusher, he said. Oh no. And I said, oh no, right, 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 I'll be there, I'll be there in the morning. So I didn't have the truck at the time and I hooked the trailer on the car and went down and got it. It was just a body shell, no bolt ons at all. And um, Anyway, we tidied it up and this is what we end up with and I go hill climbing with it. Have so a lovely time. So you've effectively built the car from a bare bone Bi shell. Just a bare body made shell. Made into a car. Yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, it's doing 200 kilometres an hour at the end of the grandstand at Eastern Creek. So the exhaust pipe comes out from just here in front of the back wheel. Just like the factory uh, yeah, uh, the race cars back yeah, in the day. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's only got two little mufflers on it and it sounds fantastic. And people actually come back to me in the pits and say, they've got it recorded on their, on their phones. <laughs> and they say, listen to this, it's the best sound in Gary, they say. <laughs> and I must say, the hill climbs, it, it, I really like the sound of it, it sounds really good. I love hill climbing, the Gippsland Car Club. I've spent a lot of time up there. At yeah, Bryant Park, it's a fabulous track. I really love it there. I can't wait to get the XY out there, actually. Maybe yeah. we can have a bit of fun yeah. together out there. <laughs> yeah, that'd be like days of old. You, you know? yeah. I'll bet you too, Bob, I can beat you. <laughs> you probably <laughs> bloody will. <laughs> These things have got that much torque, though, yeah, haven't they? I, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Tell us about the power plant. Just a, this is not quite E49 spec because it's got flat top pistons in it, so I can run ordinary petrol. But everything else, E49, the carbies are all set up as E49. It's, they're all factory carbies. First time I ever opened the bonnet of a six pack charger, I couldn't believe my eyes. Those three carbies hanging on the side of that engine. Like, I thought, this is Lamborghini type stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's fabulous. I've heard that uh, back in the day when they were developing these cars at Chrysler, that they sent a vehicle over to Italy yeah. to have the Weber carburetor That's combination right. developed over there. Yeah, now a few years ago that car is still sitting there, nobody wants it. Really? Yeah, and they're not allowed to use it over there, they're not allowed to sell it, and they're too expensive to bring it back here. And it, well, that was, you know, probably seven or eight years ago, the story was, that somebody had been there and the pace is still sitting out the back, a VG pace is still sitting out the back of the Weber carburetor place. I remember the first time I drove a six pack, six cylinder, charger combination, I could not believe the induction noise. It was <laughs> violent, was the yeah. best way I could describe it. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's, it's a fabulous noise, yeah, I, I love it, just absolutely love it. The, uh, the Weber carburetors too used to have had me bluffed in the first instance. I'd never, if I was gonna you know, service them, I'd never pull three carbies to pieces at once. I'd pull two to pieces and keep one together. So, <laughs> so when you I remembered. put them back together, and if I had a bit left, I'd say, I wonder where that come from. <laughs> but now it doesn't bother. I pull them to bits and put them back together again. I have a lovely time with them. I love them. Thanks for watching, and we'd really appreciate it if you'd like and comment on this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell because there's a lot more content coming your way.